In this episode of the narrative film, we will look at the sequence, the organization. In the last episode of the narrative film, we discussed the parts that go into making up a sequence. In this episode, we will see how those parts are organized in order for the sequence to tell a story. Last time, we showed how a film sequence is ultimately developed into a unit of action referred to as a scene. However, when we speak of a film sequence, we are usually speaking of how a number of scenes are put together to develop a more sophisticated sequence. Let's take another look at the simple sequence that we observed in the last episode. Once again, this assembly of shots is organized into a standard linear sequence. A linear sequence is one that organizes the shots in such a way as to create the impression that the shots are occurring in strict chronological order. Also, there is evident a cause to effect relationship between the shots. Let's take a look at a different scene. Once again, we are presented with a narrative that follows a linear sequence. It's now obvious in your mind that the destination of both characters is the same. Both of these sequences lead up to the following scene. This is the job of your dreams, isn't it? So you'll be moving away? To the big city. Isn't it exciting? Well, congratulations. This is good news for you. I wish there was some way I could do this job and stay here. Well, that doesn't make any sense, does it? There's hardly a chance you'd find an opportunity like this in our little town. You know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid that I'm gonna get up there and I won't like it. And I'll just be alone. Now we could put the sequence of the young man and the sequence of the young woman in front of this scene to have a longer, more complex sequence. However, there is an opportunity to reorganize these scenes into a more sophisticated sequence. In 1915, pioneering filmmaker D.W. Griffith redefined narrative filmmaking with artistic choices he made in his silent film, Birth of a Nation. Prior to this film, the narrative film tended to resemble film stage plays with few cuts and only very cautious use of such transitions as fades and dissolves. A scene was shot in one location, and then a new location was presented, and the narrative continued. Much in the same way that a play presents a scene in a location, and then changes the scenery and presents a new scene in its entirety. In the infancy of cinema, the audience for a narrative film had only the experience of the live theater to bring to the movies. D.W. Griffith's work on Birth of a Nation explored the advantages of film presentation over the limitations of the live stage play in a way that revolutionized the way that audience looked at film forever. Perhaps the most significant change that was made was the introduction of the technique known as cross-cutting. 
Griffith took advantage of the narrative film's ability to take an audience from one location to another in the blink of an eye and rearrange the storytelling into something that the live theater could never match. Though many thought the audience would not be able to make the leap, the act of cutting from one location to another was embraced by audiences. Now, rather than telling our story from one point of view to another, let's take another look at the sequence between the young man and young woman using the cross-cutting technique. This is the job of your dreams, isn't it? So you'd be moving away? Even with the cross-cutting technique, we notice that the sequence is still a linear sequence. It moves in strict chronological fashion, with the exception of the short jump in time between when the young man reads the letter and the scene with dialogue between the young couple. The sequence is still chronological in its organization, but the dissolve served as an elliptical device in that it jumps across time, but it is still chronological in its order. A linear sequence can be organized into what can be referred to as an elliptical linear sequence, but we'll cover that and other significant types of sequences in the next episode. We'll see you then.